All right, welcome back everybody. I haven't done a lot of golf cart videos. Um, I've got more coming based on some repairs I've done and upgrades I've done on our golf cart. But if there's only one thing I recommend you do for your golf cart, it's buy the right charger for your golf cart. Now, most golf carts come with a charger that looks something like this. One of these huge, uh, massive heat sink gets pretty hot. A lot of people mount them on the wall. And there's nothing inherently wrong with these. Um, I still use this one occasionally. Um, because it does charge the golf cart up pretty quick. However, 99% of the time, I do not use this because while it is a quick charger, you probably notice that it causes water to boil out of your batteries because it charges them so quickly. It also is missing two of the most important features. So I'm gonna show you today, really quickly, how to double, at least double the life of your batteries. And you know as well as I do, that these guys are not cheap. We um, replaced the batteries in this golf cart about a year ago. It was almost $1,000 just to replace four batteries, which seems ridiculous because it is. And if there's one thing I want to last long on the golf cart, that's pretty much it. That's the most replaceable part, something that you almost have to factor in. So if I can double the life of these batteries, why wouldn't I? Especially since it's going to save me money long term. And there's not a lot of upgrades you can do to your golf cart that saves you money. So let's talk about that. So before we go any further, please, if this video is helpful to you, 98% of the people watching this are not subscribers of mine. So real quick, please just click the subscribe button below. It's easy. Like the video. Comment on the video. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer every single question as long as I still can. So please, that's my only uh, ask I'm going to make before we get started. So there's two major problems with battery chargers, such as the one I just showed you. The first one is it does not take into account something called temperature compensation. And what that means is the ambient temperature of the room I'm charging these batteries in determines a couple of things. One, if the batteries are too cold, you know, right now it's uh, basically winter time here and it's about 40 degrees outside, which I know isn't cold for a lot of people watching this. But if I charge these batteries when it's 40 degrees out versus charging these batteries when it's 95 degrees out, the amount of charge that I can put into them should vary. But most chargers don't vary that charge. And if you put the same amount of charge in it when it's cold, you're gonna undercharge the batteries. And if you put that same charge in it when they're hot, you're gonna overcharge the batteries. Undercharging them, obviously not gonna cause any damage. You're just not gonna get the runtime you want. But if you overcharge them, you are gonna damage them. And for every 15 degrees Fahrenheit that a battery temperature rises, it decreases the uh, battery life by half. So it's a big deal. So the first thing is temperature compensation. You want a battery charger that looks at the ambient temperature and based on that decides how much charge to put in your battery. That's really important. However, probably the most important thing is something called desulfation. I'm not gonna get into the science behind what causes sulfation. It's just lead sulfate buildup on the batteries. It's the number one cause of premature battery failure on most of your batteries, your lead acid batteries, your AGM, even your wet flooded batteries. It is the number one cause of premature failure and it's just buildup of lead sulfate on the plates. So how do you prevent that? Well, you can't completely prevent it. However, you can use a desulfating battery charger, which is simply a charger that understands sulfate buildup. And what it does is it emits a, either a high frequency or a range of high frequencies. It actually emits those while it's charging the battery or sometimes after the battery is charged, it emits those and it causes the sulfate crystals to actually break up um, they're mostly made of sulfuric acid anyway, so it causes those crystals to break up and it extends the life of your battery. So that's the second main thing. If you combine temperature compensation with a desulfating battery charger, you're going to double the life of your batteries, maybe even more. Not only that, but you're going to eliminate a lot of the maintenance you have to do with water. You know, right now, if you have a golf cart, um, depending on your use, you're probably either checking the water levels at a minimum once a month. Some people check it once a week. And if you're using it a lot and using your charger that came with the battery with the golf cart like this guy, um, it's probably not a bad idea to check it every couple of weeks because it will boil the water out of the batteries, especially in the heat of summer. So if you have a charger like the one I'm gonna show you, it's gonna take all that into consideration and it's gonna keep the batteries charged at the right level. It's gonna desulfate them. It's gonna take into account, account temperature correction based on the ambient temperature and easily double the life of your batteries as well as reducing maintenance. You're not gonna be coming out here once a week or once a month to check your battery levels. Um, some independent studies actually have shown that in the heat of the Florida summer, these um, chargers 
have been able to t have been able to charge your battery for nine months straight without any loss, any significant amount of moisture loss. So that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to really quickly show you the battery charger that I recommend. Um, I actually own three of these. I own um, one for my golf cart, and then I have two various other ones. One that I use to just charge random 12 volt batteries. You know, if the battery's dead in my car, that kind of thing. Um, especially if you have a car that sits in your driveway that doesn't get used a lot, um, it's real handy to have one of these. Um, because it extends the life of your battery, just a good all around. Now the only downside to one of these chargers, or the charger I'm gonna show you, is that it is a slow charger. For instance, my charger that came with the golf cart can charge the batteries up in this golf cart in a matter of a couple hours. If I run the golf cart dead, um, the charger I'm gonna show you, I probably wouldn't be able to drive the golf cart until the next day. It, it does charge it reasonably well overnight. Um, and that's typically our use case. And if we do need to take it out, well, we'll plug the fast charger back in and we just use it as little as possible. And that's what we use to over our battery. So let me show you the charger and then I'm gonna take you through how to install it um, so that you're not, you don't use one of the tacky methods where you're putting the clamps on, you know, like you would be doing if you were doing a temporary charge. I'm gonna show you how to charge it um, and make it as convenient as it is if you have a, um, as it is to plug your one that came with your golf cart. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, so here's the battery charger I'm talking about. This is a battery minder. Um, this one's specifically built for 48 volt golf carts. They make them for 36 volt, as well as a standard 12 volt charger. You can see I've mounted mine. Um, I just mounted mine on a pole right beneath my garage door opener to make it convenient. Um, I've got this cord which connects to the golf cart, which I'll show you. Um, just like a lot of people mount the other golf cart charger. So this is that guy. You can see um, it's doing temperature compensation. Um, it tells you the basically the rough level of charge of your battery, so you know when it's charged. And, um, and I'll go through some of this in a little bit more detail. I'll take a, a picture of this so I'm not sitting out here just pointing at it randomly. So that's pretty much it. Now let me take a look and let me show you what it looks like. Put the camera down. You can see I have mounted it right here so that it plugs in just like any other charger, just like your main charger. And I've just put some red tape around it to make it more visible because my kids like to drive out with the cable with the wire still plugged in more than once. And then I'll take, I'll take you through how to do the install. But on the inside, you can see that's pretty much it. Just comes right in here and wires into the battery. So just wanted to give you a quick look at what it actually looks like. I'm not going to go through all the settings on this. Obviously, it comes in the manual. But really, the only thing you change once you get this connected is you press the battery type button to select between the three different types of batteries. That's it. Um, it pretty much does everything from that point on. You'll see it's got different levels of a charge at the bottom, you know, from being all the way discharged, telling you that it's low to 100%. And the third, the third one, the middle green icon, what that means is roughly 85% charge. And the reason that's important is this charger actually changes the charging rate based on how charged the battery is. Once it gets to about 85%, it begins a slow charge instead of um, you know it putting as much into it as it can. Again, something that really helps maintain the life of these batteries. And then over on the right, you'll see it tells you if the battery is connected correctly, whether you have power, it gives you if it's the battery is weak or if you got a bad cell. It also goes through a testing cycle every so often. So it, it runs a test on all the batteries and that's how it can alert you if you know, you've got a bad cell. It also tells you if it's compensating for temperature and if it's desulfating. So you'll see all these lights basically come on at different times, but it's really, it's plug and play. You plug it in, you select your battery type and then you're good from that point on. Okay, if you've made it this far, it means that not only are you interested in doubling the life of your batteries, but you want me to show you how to install this specific battery minder version. So to start with, you've got to figure out which two terminals will give you the full voltage of your golf cart. You may already know this. If you're not um, electrically or golf cart or mechanically inclined, um, this may take a little bit of work. You could use a multimeter. Um, if you have a 36 volt golf cart, you need to find how to get 36 volts. It's basically you're trying to find the two terminals that run across all of your batteries. In my case, I've got a 48 volt. So I'm already familiar with these two terminals. So right here is the negative terminal. And all I did was remove the nut, and I'm going to do the same for the positive terminal. And I'm just going to connect 
basically the little ring connectors that came with the battery charger. If you aren't sure or need some help, reach out to me in the comments below. I'm happy to help you. Um, but before you connect this, please make sure you're connecting it across the correct batteries. Um, if you were to just plug it into one single battery, I don't think you'd hurt anything, but you certainly wouldn't be charging your batteries and the charger would let you know that it was, it was pretty weak because instead of seeing 36 or 48 volts, it'd be seeing 12. But if you're not very electrically inclined, reach out to me, I'll try to help. But don't install this until you know which two terminals get you the full voltage of your golf cart. As you'll, you'll see here, now that I've got the, term, the ring terminals connected and screwed back down, this is just a little connector that you're going to connect once you put um, this connector on the front of the golf cart. So I've just decided on this location right here. I did that by making sure there was nothing behind it that would interfere with it. And I'm using a 7 8 inch hole saw. Um, you could use a 7 8 inch drill bit. I would just be really careful. Um, most of these golf carts are made of fiberglass and, and you could, using a drill bit, you could potentially crack or um, end up breaking your the actual part of the golf cart right here I'm drilling through. So I wouldn't recommend a drill bit. 7 8 inch hole saw is the way to go. The only other tool you're actually going to need besides this is a Phillips screwdriver. So you just put the connector through. And I like to orient mine with the um, where the cap opens downward. Personal preference, you can do yours any way you want. You want to kind of make sure it's level. That way it actually looks kind of decent. And then the last part is it comes with four screws, four Phillips screws. You're just going to screw these in to hold this connector in. And then once you get these screws in, you've actually done all of the hard part. The rest of this is easy. And it may be hard to notice, but I did speed these videos up a little bit. So if it looks like I'm working in some cases a little faster than you are, that's normal. I just didn't want you to have to sit here and, and watch me operate at my normal slow speed. I wanted to kind of speed things up a little bit. After all, the name of the channel is Quick Fix. So once you've got that on the back side, you're just going to connect the connector from the plug to the one that has the two terminals that you installed at the beginning. And then just kind of put this out of the way in your golf cart. Um, every golf cart's a little bit different kind of thing. So wherever you feel that this would be out of the way and not going to cause any issues. So I like that underneath this cover is where all the other electrical wiring is. So just kind of putting it underneath there and like I said, getting it out of the way. And that's about it as far as the install goes. Um, the only other part is actually taking the charger itself. Um, really, you can mount it. You don't have to. It's obviously going to be more convenient if you mounted it, you know, like I did hanging from my garage door opener. But you can mount it on the wall um, or wherever or not at all. But really, all that you have to do is plug it into your wall outlet and then to charge your golf cart. You simply plug it in right here. And that's it. Simple and fairly inexpensive way to definitely increase the life of your batteries um, There's some reports out there of it tripling or even quadrupling battery life by using this um, Not only that um, Not only are you increasing that but you're reducing the maintenance like I said You're not gonna have to come out here and check the water as often You'll already notice less boil out and with batteries costing you know upwards of 200 or 250 bucks a piece for these golf carts um, you know as well as I do that anything you can do to save some uh, money would be most appreciated. So that's about it. Once you get it plugged in, you're ready to go. Uh, thanks for watching. Please reach out to me if you have any questions or comments or need any help. I'm happy to help in any way I can. Thanks.